and the shafts don't match, don't be concerned with the differences at the bottom of board or ground line measurement. On the other end of the spectrum, you have your wedges. If a club maker is adding specialty type um, wedges, like the, the blade style wedges, to sat rather than the uh, matching cavity back wedges, then you might find some discrepancy in the bottom of board or ground line measurements. For example, um, using our same 41 inch shaft inserted into a blade style wedge, it might very well measure 42 and a half inches. Then we know the bottom of board or ground line measurement is an inch and a half. In this case, we would want to tip trim an additional half inch so we establish a uniform flex throughout the set. What happens if we didn't? Well, then the wedges will play a little bit softer or more flexible than the rest of the set. And since wedges are often partial swing clubs, this may help create some additional feel without sacrificing accuracy. The point I want to make is it never hurts to check and adjust when necessary. And club makers will encounter variations in the bottom of board or ground line measurement and need to know how that affects the flex of the shaft. The next subject is shaft flex. Now there's two different categories of shafts. One is discrete flex and the other is combination flex or combo for short. With discrete flexes, you buy the flex you want the club to be. For instance, ladies, seniors, regular, stiff, or extra stiff. Combination flexes can make at least two different shaft flexes from the same shaft. And the most popular are LNA, or ladies and seniors, or regular and stiff combination flexes. Now the Apollo Ballistic is a rather unique shaft as it allows the, uh, the club maker to make four distinct flexes uh, with one single shaft. Why is this important? Well, it, cuts, it, it helps to cut down on inventory because you only have to carry one master shaft instead of two or more. And secondly, as a club maker, you have the ability to cut in between flexes in cases where a person may fall in between flexes. For example, let's look at our true temper multi-step light iron shafts. There is an A&L shaft that can either be cut to a ladies flex by following trim chart double A or senior flex by using a, a trim chart double B. You'll notice that there's a one inch difference in the tip trimming between these two flexes. Now in the RNS shaft, uh, they can either be cut to regular flex by trimming to trim chart double A or to stiff flex by using trim chart CC. In this case, you'll notice that there's a two inch difference in the tip trimming between these two flexes. Let's say we want to make a shaft between regular and stiff flex. We can trim uh, one inch more than what it calls for in trim chart A, or one inch less than what it calls for in trim chart C, which would be trim chart B in this case, or double B in this case. I want to mention hybrids again uh, for a minute. Let's say we had a number four hybrid. Now most club, club makers would just assume because it has a number four engraved on the sole that they would treat it as a four iron if it required a 370 parallel tip shaft. Well, let's say for the sake of example that this particular hybrid weighed 236 grams. Um, take a look at the, the uh, chart for a second. Uh, you're going to see that this is the same weight as a two iron and not a four iron. Therefore, tip trimming in length, we would tip trim the shaft as if the head were a two iron. Now, if you didn't uh, tip trim less than what uh, th than that amount, then you're going to end up with a stiffer shaft because the head weighs less. On top of that, you may not have even enough shaft left over on the butt end to get your desired length, and you'd be forced to use an extender. Now, if the hybrid weighed 249 grams, or essentially the same as a 4-iron, then you would tip trim and uh, treat it for length, just as if it were a 4-iron. And as you can see, it's not that complicated. You just have to use a little common sense. 
Another thing to mention, the, tar the charts don't tell you how much to butt trim. Again, this is to your desired length. It's, it's physically impossible to provide an exact reading because the variations in the bottom of board to ground line measurements of all the heads that you might encounter, plus you might need to make a club for a taller or shorter person. So we just leave that alone and just say just butt trim to length. And lastly, when you're in doubt when it comes to uh, tip trimming a shaft, always double check with a reliable source. Now there's one last principle I'd like to talk about regarding tip trimming, and that's the concept of hard stepping or soft stepping. Technically it's not even tip trimming at all, but it's one way of creating in-between flexes when it's not possible by tip trimming. Take a look at the chart for a second. As we mentioned before, taper tip shafts receive no tip trimming at all, but require the club maker to purchase a specific raw length shaft. For example, if we wanted a taper tip shaft for a three iron, we would normally select a 40 inch raw length for the, for the dynamic gold or 39 inch for TT light. That's just the way it is. Every um, manufacturer has a, a, a or pattern of shaft has a different specified raw lengths. If we wanted to soft step the shaft, we might take the shaft that was designated for the two iron or the 40 and a half inch raw length in dynamic gold and place that in the three iron. What this is going to do is make the club more flexible because the tip to first step length is a half inch longer than in the 40 inch raw length. And this will make the club about a quarter flex softer. And if we soft step two lengths or use the 41 inch shaft, uh, the one designated for the one iron, and then put it into the three iron, this would make the club about a half a flex softer. Now hard stepping is just the opposite. You would choose a shorter raw length to make the club stiffer. We might take the shaft for the four iron or the 39 and a half inch um, in the case of the dynamic gold and place that in the three iron, essentially making it a quarter flex stiffer. Now one word of caution regarding hard stepping, it's going to be able to, it's going to be difficult to do a full set because eventually you're going to run out of the raw lengths that are shorter. 